this video is to show you how to do the uh, how to lay out your site plan uh, that we had starting in class. We're gonna work as much as we can on this video, and then the rest we can finish in class. All the notes that we can add, we can do that in class. Uh, but let's get started with the site plan. If you recall from the lecture or from the book, the site plan what it what a, what it tells you is the condition of the property. And uh, one of the things that you have to look at is the, 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 the what is the condition, what is there, if there's any trees, if there's something you have to remove, if there's any hills, and you can get that with the grading plan or also by doing your site analysis. But right now we're gonna take into, uh, we're gonna assume that there's nothing there, it's just an empty lot. Uh, I, ch I changed the size of the lot, it's not what it's, I have there on Blackboard, uh, I changed it. Our lot si size is gonna be 80 by 120 so we can so we can fit our house there and that property take into account the setbacks so it should be able to to fit so uh, again we're taking the, the the approach a different approach instead of just reading the plan we're actually drawing the plan that way you, you understand what is it that you're drawing and hopefully it makes a lot more sense by drawing it you understand what is it that you're looking at so whenever you see a site plan the first thing you want to look at is or uh, a sheet with a site plan it's where is that property? How, how big is my property? Uh, where is it located? Where is it? What is it there? And where is my structure in, uh, in proportion? Or uh, where is it located in my property? So the first thing we need to, to look at or, or first, first thing that you see on, this, on the site plan is the property. Where is it located and what, how big is it? So I can put my structure in that area, right? My canvas will be, uh, the lot or the land okay so the first thing we're gonna do is start drawing our property which is the the you know the one of the the, the first thing you want to look at in your site plan and uh, try to find the center point of the sheet that we that I gave you this is a C size sheet which is 24 by 18 try to find the the center of it more or less try to go like from corner to corner and again, it doesn't have to be exact, just more or less. And I guess if you have a, lot, a longer straight edge, maybe like a T-square, that will work. Go from corner to corner. And I'm just gonna eyeball it very lightly. And more or less around there. This is more or less the center of my sheet, my drawing area, okay? Uh, I'm just gonna go maybe an inch up from the center just to make sure I have enough space at the bottom. Okay, uh, about there. So just mark it again, it doesn't have, has, doesn't have to be exact. Um, it doesn't have to be precise per se, because we are, this is not a technical drafting course, it's more, we're doing this as an exercise just to learn and you, for you guys to make a connection of what is it that you're looking at when you're looking at, at a site plan. So let's say I'm gonna start from there. So first thing we're gonna look at is where is our uh, property? How big is it and where is it? Where's our canvas so I can locate and put my structure there? And uh, again, the size of our lot is gonna be 80 by 120. Okay, we, I, made a, I made a difference here. I made a, uh, uh, some changes to it. So what we're gonna do is gonna be 80 like this and 120 like this, okay? So from the center, we're gonna go 40 and 40 so we can get 80. And then from the center, we're gonna go 60 and 60 so we can get 120, okay? And we're using the 330 seconds scale for our site plan. Okay, it's a, it's a smaller scale because we're looking more. We're not looking just at the house, we're looking at the structure and the property. So we have to scale it, make it a little bit smaller so it fits on our sheet. So we're using the 332nd scale, okay, three over 32, all right? So I'm gonna go 40 feet up just to mark it and I'm gonna try to make it as fast as, fast as I can because uh, I don't want this video to get too long. Hopefully I can, I'll be able to, uh, do it keep it short so I'm gonna go uh, 60 up okay so that's right there mark it right there and I'm gonna go 60 down because uh, it's 120 okay right there and then I'm gonna go 40 to the left and 40 to the right so uh, again use the 330 second scale 40 to the right and 42, where's 80? Uh, over here, 40 to the left, okay? So from here, I'm just gonna do a light line 
and try to do this as straight as you can. Okay, again, we have all tools. If you have a T square, you can use that or in triangles. But right now, I don't have that, so I'm just gonna do a very light line just for me to see. And then I'm gonna come back and, and put the actual line type so I can define where my property is. Okay, so very light. I'm just gonna, again, try to keep it as straight as you can and parallel as you can. All right, so now I know where my lot is or the size of my lot, right? So it's, this is right here. This is 80 by 120. Get rid of this. Okay, so we have a rectangle rectangular um, uh, lot. So what we're gonna do, that means that this is, uh, it, it, we it goes from this point to that point, it goes back and forth. So from on every corner, we're gonna put a mark here. We're gonna put a, a dot showing you where the property is going and where does it end. Okay, so it's there. Okay, and we talked about this in class. That's what uh, the rods, they're there. It, it, they were put there where the subdivision was developed to show and know where exactly each property is located. Okay, so now we have, these are the corner of our, of our lots or on my lot and your lot. Okay, so mark them. And then we're gonna go over this line. Again, it should be light, so make sure you do it light. And we're gonna put a, uh, um, it's called a phantom line in, in AutoCAD, a property line, okay? What it is, is gonna be a, and it's gonna be a little bit thick, uh, thick so that one make sure you put some pressure there. So it's gonna be a long line, too short, long, too short, long, too short, all the way around, okay? That's a property line. And we have to draw it like that. So it's gonna be, and this doesn't have to be uh, all of them. I mean, we're doing it by hand, so, and I'm not checking the space in between the lines and the length of the actual lines because we're, it's just an exercise. So something like that, okay? Long, short, short, long, short, short, long, all the way. So we're now, first thing that we see when you see a site plan is where is the property and that's what we're doing right now, okay? Long, short, short, long, short, short. And those again have to be a little bit thick because from the lecture, remember that you all you always wanna see the important information first when you see the, cha the page. So when you see a site plan, first thing you wanna see is where's the property and where's my building uh, in accordance to the property that I have. So right now we're doing our property line. And again, we're, we already marked the corners of our lot. And now we're putting the line type, which is a property line, which in AutoCAD is known as a phantom line. And I'm just throwing it out there. Those of you taking the, the photo, the photo, the AutoCAD class, that way you know when we get into line types, okay? So now we have to find where a property is, okay? So that's good. Now we see a site plan, you know, okay, what, what am I looking at? Okay, I'm looking at, and this is the property right here, okay? Now, uh, it's 80, so we're gonna put here 80 feet. We don't have the actual bearings, uh, I'll, I'll try to get those by 120 feet, and we mark them. Okay, we need to mark them uh, by 120. To know what is it in reality, how much do I have here, how much space is it from here to here, how much from here to here, and so on and so forth. The actual bearing, the actual, uh, the, the, the degrees, minutes, and seconds, we're gonna discuss those in class so we can add them, all right? And, uh, okay, so now we know where the property is, sizes, so now we know. Now, next step we're gonna do are gonna be the set setbacks from the lecture setbacks and also the video that I have there, the lecture videos. Uh, there, uh, you have to respect that space, even though it's your property, you have to respect that space. You cannot build on top of that. You, you, you cannot put your structure there on top of that because of the reasons we already discussed during class. So setbacks, what we're gonna do for in our, in our, uh, for our property, we're gonna do seven on, on the sides. I wonder what, let's do six, just to be on the safe side. We're gonna do six on the sides, uh, 20 and 10. Okay, so 10 from the rear, 20 from the front, six from the sides. And again, those are the setbacks. So let's go ahead and mark it. Again, we're, we're working 332nd scale. Uh, if I'm going, well, I might speed this up on uh, the video so it get, doesn't get too long. So six, that's four, five, six right there. And then six on the side. Right there, 20 in the front. 
So 20 will be right here. And then 10 in the back. And 10 right here. Okay, now these lines are gonna be not as heavy as this, a little bit lighter, but you wanna see them. And those are gonna be uh, hidden lines, which is just dashed lines, all right? I'm gonna adjust the line, try to make it as straight as you can. And some, take it all the way to, to the outside, some go inside, doesn't matter. Uh, but just, they're gonna be just a little bit lighter and just dashed lines like this. Okay, so we're setting up or we're, uh, So we're showing where our setbacks are. Okay. I'm using this side so I can see them. So these are parallel, or as much as I can. Okay. And 20 is right here. I think with with a seven on the sides would, would have been fine, but you know, just better be on the safe side. So now these are our setbacks. So here we're gonna put, so again, this is a property. Next thing we wanna know, okay, where are our setbacks? So we know the property where it's located, we know the sizes of the property, right? The distances from where the corners are. Now the setbacks, so we know what to respect. So we're gonna put here 20 foot setback. And six, I'm not gonna put setback, but you can put it six and then 10. Setback, setback, setback. So six setback, uh, on the sides, 20 in the front, 10 in the back. Now, so that's why you draw, that's why you look, when you look at the side plan, this is what you're looking at. What is the property the size, then where are the setbacks so I can respect that. Now here, now we know where we, where we can put our structure, okay? It has to be inside the setbacks. It could be way in the back, it could be in the front, it could be to the side, it doesn't matter, as long as you're inside that space there. So here it's where you have to design and think about uh, the yard. You're gonna have, you want some yard in the front, you wanna have more yard in the, in the, in the front or in the back, uh, how the driveway's gonna come in, come in, sidewalks, so all those things come into consideration. If the house is not too big, you can put it to the side, maybe have the garage on the side, have the, the driveway coming like this, enter into the side, or you wanna put it in the back, or you wanna have it in the front, then maybe you can put it right here so it goes into a garage. It depends on your design and depends how you wanna lay out your structure here, okay? So, but for that you need your setbacks and we already have them, six on the side, 10 and 20. So we're creating, creating our, our site plan, okay? So next step is where am I gonna locate my, my structure? Our design or the one that I gave you, the shell that I gave you, it has like a, a T shape for the purpose and so I can make it fast, I'm gonna do just a, a square. Uh, I believe in the, the drawings that I got or the sizes that I got, it was 61 feet by, I think, 50 and eight inches. And let me pull it in. I got 60 here and then 50 and eight inches from here to here. So right now I'm gonna draw it like if I was drawing it like this. I can just to speed it up and make it faster. And don't don't, don't wait, wait, waste too much, much time, I'm sorry. So, all right, so, uh, that's the way I'm gonna draw it. But again, you have to draw it the actual footprint of the house. Now, that's why I gave you this, this assignment first to do the floor plan. Now you can have it like this, have it like that. Depend, depending where you're gonna have your, your, your driver come in and your front door, set it up either like this or like that or like that or like that. However you have designed your front entrance. Now keep in mind where the garage is because you're gonna have to provide some space there for the driveway, if it, especially if it's on the side, for it to come in and going inside. So think of those things, okay? Now notice that this is way too big for this one because we did this one 3 16 and we're drawing at 3 30 seconds this one. So see the scale, it's a lot smaller. So what I did, I measured this using 3 16 and I'm gonna draw it using 3 30 seconds, okay? So measure, you're measuring 3 16 So the scale from the floor plan and the, and the side plan, they're different. But I'm gonna, I got my measurements using 3 16 because that's the scale for the floor plan and I'm gonna draw it at 3.30 seconds, okay? So now I have to locate it. Again, it's up to you where you're gonna place it. In my case, I wanna put it a little bit, for, as much as I can to the front because I want my, uh, I want a nice backyard, okay? I'd rather have my, personally, I'd rather have more space for me and for my family in the back than to have it in the front for just people to see when they drive by. So I'd rather have the space for me. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna lay it out. I'm gonna put it. Um, I'm gonna put it like that. Okay, but keep in mind I'm just doing it like this, right? Uh, yeah, I wanna do that. I wanna do that. Okay, so 60. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna place it as much. What I'm gonna do personally? I'm gonna put it right here on the edge, wherever it lands. I wanna put it to the front and to the side. Matter of preference. Again, you can put it in the center, in the back. As long as you're inside this setback area, you'll be fine. But I'm gonna put it to the left because, yeah, just because, uh, because I, that's my design. So, 61, uh, 33 seconds, we're 61. It's right here. Okay, so that's 61 by, uh, what was it? 50 and eight inches. So by 50, 48, right there, 50 and eight inches. Now keep in mind, 30 seconds, it only has six lines, which means each one of those lines uh, counts for two, for two inches. So six, eight, around there, okay? So more or less my structure is right about Again, I'm trying to do it as straight as I can. I'm gonna do it light first, and then come back and and uh, make it a little bit darker. Okay, so my structure is right there, and I'm gonna go back to it. And since I put it right in the setback, I'm gonna overwrite, not overwrite it, but put my solid line, and that one there might be a little bit dark too, because, okay, keep in mind, you always wanna see, um, you want, for your um, um, you want to see where your proposed structure is going to be at well actually this was going to be it should be something like that and I'm not going to measure something like that okay so now I know, so we're going, we're going from the opposite end. Instead of just reading it, we're drawing it. So when you, when you draw it, it's like if you were reading it, of course. So what is it that you're looking at? Or I'm looking at where's my property, where my setbacks. Now, where is my house? Or where's the house in reference of my property? I'm gonna try to do this. And again, this, I didn't draw, I didn't measure them, but just so you can show the footprint of my house. Somewhere there. Okay. So this is my structure there. And then here you can put proposed uh, house. Uh, and then sometimes we put, put, we put here like an elevation marker, which gonna, we haven't discussed yet. We can discuss it in class. Actually, it doesn't look like that. It just it looks like a circle like that, and then this is hatch, that's hatch, and then you can put here, finish floor, 18 inches above curb. And that's something we're gonna discuss right now. Okay, some hatchet, you could if you want to, just to make it easier for the whoever's looking at your plants to know exactly, and I'm hatching it freehand, but this line should be straight. So it's easier for you to locate where the structure is. So now you know where the property is, setbacks, and now you know you can see, and I apologize for these lines. I should have not drawn these like that. Okay. Okay, so now we're understanding where the, how the property, how my house is in relation to the property. Now, we need to locate where is the property, where is it actually my, my, my house in reference to my property. In other words, if the contractor sees this, does he know exactly where to place my house? If they need to take dirt out, do I, does he know exactly where? Do they have to break dirt in, which more than likely they will, to, to compact, compact it for the, for the foundation, where are they gonna bring it in? If you don't tell them, they might bring might, they might bring the dirt in and start compacting over here in the back. And you don't want it in the back; you want it in the front, or vice versa. If you want it in the back, maybe they start bringing the dirt in in the front and compacting it. So you have to tell them exactly where you want it, and for that you need dimensions.
okay? So once you have your property, your setbacks, and your uh, building outline, you need to tell it where do you want this located, okay? And you always tie it to the uh, property line. So for that, we need dimensions. We have not not discussed them as very thorough, but we need dimensions. In other words, we have to tell the contractor, in reference to my property, he's gonna go and he's gonna see it, where is the house in, 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 that, in reference to that. So for that, you have to tell them with dimensions. So in other words, in this case, I'm gonna do a dimension from the property to this point right there. Okay, I'm gonna try it. Okay, so like that, I'm gonna put a dimension here. Again, and then, so the dimension is from there to there, from here to here, and again, this is just to tell the contractor where exactly my house is located in reference to the site. Pull this one up, and do just major breaks. In this case, we only have, well, we haven't talked about that, but you don't, have, you don't have to dimension every single thing, just the major changes, if, the, if any, on your footprint of the house. Right there, and then I'm gonna take it all the way to the end. Okay, so now I'm telling that, uh, uh, in reference to the, uh, to the 80 feet, which is from side to side, I, you now, now they know, with the dimensions, where it's located. And now we have to do it also on this end of the property. So I'm gonna, and now here we have it in the corner. So they should know it's 20, 20, uh, 20 feet from the property, but if it was higher, then of course you have, you, you dimension it. And regardless, you have to dimension it. So I'm gonna go from here out. I'm gonna go from here out. Okay, here out. and then I'm gonna take it all the way to the end. So from here, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna draw my, again, I'm, I'm like that. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna take it all the way over here and all the way to the back. Okay, so what I'm doing, now I'm tying my structure so they know exactly where it's located in reference to my property. So I'm gonna pull this one dimension right there and a dimension right there. All right, so what I'm dimensioning is from, from the property, you're gonna go X amount of feet to get to the entry, right, which is that. And then from here to here, it's so much, which is right there. And then from here to here, it's so much, because the number's gonna go there, and the number's gonna go there. I'm not gonna measure them right now, you, you go ahead and measure it. Okay, so measure it right now, like in three, three seconds, how much is it from here? Well, here's 20 feet, for sure. And then how much is it from here to here? and put it right there. And then from here to here, put it right there. Here to here, put it right there. Same thing there. Okay, so now we know where the property is, the setbacks, where is our structure located, and once you place it where you want it, you have to dimension it, tying it back to the property so you know, or the contractor knows exactly where it's located. But you need dimensions. Okay, we're almost done. And I know this video is getting a little bit longer, but we're almost done. Now. Uh, and then the, the last little detail we're doing, we can do them in class uh, once we get, but make sure you have this at least, not at least. You need to have it like this uh, up to where I finish, have it like this, and then when you come back, we'll go over some uh, minor uh, uh, text that we have to add. Now, right now what we have drawn is the property, right? Now, if you look at the of the, the property that I gave you, which in reality we changed the sizes, but there's a, there's a street uh, going and, and this is the, the the street right here and I think it's called Monica Street okay now for the property and again it depends on every on, on subdivisions uh, it's not right where the sidewalk is if there's any sidewalks usually you have some space and then you have the sidewalk so there's some space there and again it depends on the subdivision so we're gonna draw and uh, I think there's a sidewalk yeah there's a sidewalk there we're gonna draw a sidewalk and then we're gonna draw the curb and gutter and uh, actually has a green area, if I recall, recall correctly, and then curb and gutter. Okay, so we're gonna do this. And I, I don't know exactly the, how, how they have it. I'm just gonna, uh, I guess, eyeball it or, or, or kind of figure it out because it depends on the subdivision. So these are the rods that they're there on the property. 
from there where to the sidewalk starts, if there's some sidewalks, there's about two to three feet. Let's go ahead and do three feet, okay? So now we're gonna draw the sidewalks. So 330 seconds, I'm gonna go three feet out from the property, okay? So three feet is right, right here, and I'm gonna put it here also. And three feet is right there, okay? So I'm gonna draw a line like so, and a little bit further out, out where my property is, okay, like that. So notice the property is, here's a rod, this, the, all this is grass or dirt, whatever it is, and then the sidewalk's gonna start from here. The sidewalk, let's go ahead and do them, um, I think they, they're from three to four feet, let's go ahead and do them, um, let's, let's go ahead and do them um, four feet. Uh, might not be four, but let's, just for the sake of the assignment, let's go ahead and do them um, four, Feet. Okay, four feet. So now what we're drawing right now is the actual sidewalk. Okay, right here, the sidewalk. Okay, and if I can, I'm gonna try try to show you show you these images uh, when I edit the video. I'm gonna try to show you what is it that I'm talking about. Okay. So this, this our sidewalk. Now, I believe it has some green area there. I believe so. And then the curb and gutter. So let's say green area, let's say it's about two feet. So we're gonna go two feet from there, which is right here. All right. And if this is not making sense, I'm gonna show you some pictures and it's gonna be clear. All right. Okay. So this is my sidewalk. This is green area. And then the curving gutter is gonna go here. Curving gutter, they're six and twelve in six inches and twelve and twelve inches, which here are gonna be very tiny. So six inches right there, and then twelve inches right there. And I'm gonna show you an image of what a curving gutter is, in case you don't know. Okay, curving gutter is around there. Gutter is right here. And I'm doing it very light for a purpose. Okay? I don't know, it looks like a bunch of lines, but it's gonna make sense. So this is our sidewalk, <clears throat> green area, curve, and gutter. Okay? Now, one thing we're missing is where's our drive in for a garage? Right? Let's say my garage is right here. And let's say my entry door is right here. I need to show how I'm gonna pull in into the garage and how I'm gonna walk in into my front door. The way you design it, it's up to you. Some have a driveway to the street and then the actual sidewalk or the, the sidewalk to go into the house also to the street. Some have a driveway and then from the driveway they connect to the entry door, it's up to you. I'm gonna do the second option, okay? Which is the driveway and then it connects to the entry. So I need to show that because right now the way we're showing it is that yeah we have it there but how am I going to get into the house how am I going to drive into it okay <clears throat> before I do that um, depends on the size of the street <clears throat> usually it's like 25 feet and to the, to the center just to the center so I'm going to measure about 25 feet but I'm going to eyeball it for now and I'm going to do a center line like that and then seal and Monica Drive, I think it is. So I'm showing you where the street, where we're showing right now is the street, gutter, curb, green area, sidewalk. So now you're driving through here. How are you gonna go in? So here, what I'm gonna do, and I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna measure it, I'm just gonna do it right now so we can do it fast. I'm gonna show my driveway all the way to the uh, gutter. Okay, so now that means then my sidewalk, I'm gonna have to erase that sidewalk, that part right there. I'm gonna have to erase my curb also and my green area because you don't want grass to go through the through there. And the, actually the gutter we are gonna leave there. The gutter we are gonna leave there. The gutter does go there. It, it continues in other words. So it's gonna be something like this. Of course it doesn't go straight here. Usually you pull it out like this 
and again for now just eyeball it because it actually should be right here we're not going to be too precise because this blueprint in class is not the actual residential class all right so just have a better idea what it is that we're doing so and again all this makes sense just go to your house or go to any driveway and look about look about what we have talked about and you get it okay so now we have an entrance now we can go through the street and drive into our house into the garage and then what i'm going to do here and again I'm, this i'm just make you make sure you measure it maybe it could be three feet sidewalk i'm just making it fast I'm gonna put something like this here, just so it connects. Something like that. Okay, and you want to, you have to show this on your side plan. Okay, so it's, I'm gonna drive here. When I park here, there's a way, there's a sidewalk that, that I'm gonna take, so I can go into the house. Okay. All right. So in a nutshell, let me just overview or go over it again. When you see a side plan, this is where you're gonna be. Again, this is very simple and very basic, but this is the concept you're gonna look at. You have your property with the sizes and bearings, or the bearings, right? Right now we just put in the actual length of them. You have to mark them from where to where are they, all right? These are the rods. From there, we have to show the setbacks, six, 10, 20. Inside the setbacks, you can just put your house wherever you want. I put it here, you can put it in the middle, you can put it in the back, it's up to you. Just wherever you put it, right? And it has to be to scale, wherever you put it, you have to dimension from the property telling the contractor in this case, or whoever's gonna view this this uh, plan or this sheet, where is it located in regards to my property. So you always tie it down to property, there, 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 and then take it up to the back, and also from the side, grab it from this property line, which is this one, put it there, put it there, put it there, and where it ties. Now again, I set up mine like this, maybe you have it the other way. It doesn't matter, follow the same steps. Once you have it dimensioned, then how, where is the driveway to go into the garage and how you're gonna connect. Now you wanna do the sidewalk all the way to the front, it's up to you, okay? I just have mine like this. And of course the sidewalk doesn't, doesn't go on top of the driveway, this is sloping down actually, it's sloping down. And then the curb does continue, not the gutter. I'm sorry, the opposite. The gutter does continue, not the curb. And I'll show you images of that, okay? So in a nutshell, this is more or less what you're looking at. This is, will be your site plan. Uh, have it like this when you come to class. And then the, I'm, I'm sorry. And also you put this the, the street. This is a center line. It's similar to the property line. It's just that it's one instead of two. So it's a long one, short, long, short. Okay. So it's long, short, long, short, long, short. And uh, put the name of the street, which is Monica Drive, CL, center line. And then put the name of the street. Okay. Have it like this. Have your site plan like this on Monday when we meet. Uh, and Monday we'll put this, this the sheet uh, and then some clarification I wanna make here, the brake line here and all that, but we haven't covered those those line types. So that's why I don't wanna go and, and confuse you a little more than, uh, or confuse you uh, with different line types that I'm gonna show you. Okay, so this is, make sure you have this by Monday, like this, it should be like this, done on Monday, which can add some things during class. Please watch videos, um, also, now that I'm here, please uh, go ahead and, and go to chapter three and watch the lecture videos for chapter three and work on the chapter three problems and chapter three um, questions, okay, which is floor plans. It's two chapters for floor plans. Chapter three, work on them for this week. So for this week, you have the site plan which are for chapter two, and we're gonna you're gonna jump to chapter, chapter three and look at the lecture videos and do the chapter three problems and chapter three questions. All right, so sorry if this video got a little bit too long, but just follow, follow what, I, what I did and you should be fine with your assignment.